did my book report on An Ordinary Man by Paul Rusasa Bagina. He was a, ho a hotel manager in the genocide in Africa in Rwanda, inspired the movie Hotel Rwanda. When Paul was born in 1954, he was a sibling of about nine kids. And in Africa, they have different tribes to, of course, you know, separate the people. And that's just how that they were born. So Paul was born half Hutu and Tutsi. Those are the two main tribes that the book describes and that the war was between. Um, since Paul was Hutu, his father, by blood, um, that makes his family Hutu for the future. So the Tutsis are the ones who become the rebels, who come after the... Wait, the Hutu go after the Tutsis. Um, so Paul, when he was young, he grew up in a religious background and everybody thought he was going to grow up to be a priest because that was just kind of in his family lines. His father was very powerful and full of wisdom, so they thought he would follow suit and be a priest. But money kind of uh, motivated Paul when he was younger, so he started painting houses and reselling little knickknacks to make money here and there when he was younger because he liked saving up his money and working hard. And that's how he started in the hotel business. At 19, he applied at the hotel um, Mille Colinas, which was the hotel in Rwanda that he was working at during the genocide. When he was 19, he started there as a um, front desk and doing different runner and bellman jobs and eventually got promoted to one of the only African managers at the hotel. So, um, in 1994, the war or genocide started in Rwanda. The Hutu rebels um, went after the Tutsis only because of generally looks. The Tutsi tribe was generally tall and skinny, and the Hutus were shorter with wider noses. They would even like measure um, people's heads and noses to tell if they were Hutu or Tutsi. And <laughs> the Tutsi tribe, um, they were also called cockroaches, and they were kind of hiding for their lives. So the part that Paul played was he was a major uh, key player to helping save some of the Tutsi people because his wife and his kids were Tutsi. Well, his wife and then his kids were mixed. So he was really afraid that they might not get out alive as well. Um, so once the genocide started, he and his family... Um, could only seek refuge in their house for a short while because they were killing everybody in his neighborhood and his neighbors. So they went to the hotel to keep the hotel safe because he felt he had an honor and responsibility to keep the hotel away from the rebels and from destroying it. And so soon all of the Tutsi people tried to come to him to, to have him help them because he was a good man and he was going to help them. So he ended up keeping over 1,200 refugees in the hotel and kept them safe for over two weeks, which was a long time because they were killing about 8,000 people per day. And they would come to the front of the hotel, but the UN um, United Nations was guarding from Belgium because that was their hotel. So they were only guarding that for a short while. And within that time, Paul was able to... <clears throat> Paul was able to negotiate with different soldiers and give them beer and alcohol so that they wouldn't take his people or, you know, try to kill him. He figured that any man who could look another man in the eye and talk to them straight, it was harder for them to be violent or even try to kill him. 
So that was his main point was negotiating with people and making um, bargains and just trying to hold them off as long as he could so that they wouldn't go into the hotel and kill all of the people. There was a point in the book where he also uh, paid off a couple of rebel soldiers and generals because they were trying to take him and his family hostage because his wife is Tutsi. But he was able to talk them off and give them beer and alcohol to keep them from taking his family, which was really scary. <laughs> so after a few days of that and the United Nations um, ended up leaving, they weren't even going to help in the end. Well, I mean, they did help, but they weren't helping in the mid. He was trying to get a hold of everybody in the U.S. office and everybody was just delaying his backs and not getting back to him. So after finally getting a hold of the prime minister, it bought him time at the hotel so that the rebels wouldn't attack his hotel. And they ended up um, being protected by the UN to get out of Rwanda and fly to a neighboring African country, which him and his family did get out to. But this is one of the world's fastest genocides and he was someone who was able to save 1,200 lives by negotiating and giving hospitality and being a hotel manager and sticking to his duties. So I thought it was really cool and interesting that he's still alive to tell his story. And he's a very humble man. He never really said that he saved anybody. He just said that he was able to negotiate and that was part of his job as a hotel manager. So that was my book report on Paul Rusesabagina, and that's it.